Hello and welcome to this Victoria 2 Pop Demand mod Let's Play. Now we're doing the extension for PDM, which is a Concert of Europe mod. This mod throws the world timeline back to 1821, instead of the usual 1836 start date. Now 1836 was the year before Queen Victoria was coronated. So at this time, we're going to be playing as the UK, of course it's me. So, the British Empire. We are number one. We are the world's greatest power. Because we have number one in prestige, number one in industry, and we are second in military. That's only because the Chinese outdo us in the military field. Now, as we can see, we have here British India, which is going to be a great focal point for our campaign, because we're going to be expanding our empire quite a bit, and trying to incorporate a lot of these princely states, that's what these small little countries are, which are under our sphere of control. Now you see, as the UK, we have all these allies who are actually all in our sphere. So they are technically controlled by us, but not directly. They join all our wars and everything. So we're probably going to have a war to take over the, the Sikh Empire. We're going to try and get Burma and Siam and Johore and all of that. And Brunei eventually, and uh, hopefully all of Indonesia. We haven't colonized the entire landmass of Australia yet. We will. And we'll also start in New Zealand. It's kind of sad we don't have anything there, but a, a lot of what we're doing is also going to focus in Africa, because we're going to colonize South Africa and everything up here, Central Africa. I'm not sure about North Africa. I, I think the French are going to beat us to that. Probably will. We're going to have lots of wars here with the, the Lesotho, I think that's how that's said, and the the Zosa? I can never pronounce that place. But of course our common enemy, the Zulu. So we're going to go ahead here and jump into the game as the British Empire. tally -ho. Oh, and here we are on the beautiful world map. I did not click that. You have to excuse some bit of lag spikes in this game. Victoria 2 has been doing this recently. And it never used to. I think it's my computer's memory, because a lot of it is used, and this game takes a lot. Here we just got uh, France, Austria, Spain, the Russian bear, very big. Uh, here's British Canada. It's uh, called British North America, which was the official name, but we're just going to call it British Canada, because it's honestly just going to be that. We're not going to take anything here which the United States is going to want to grab. So we're going to stay far away from any colonial border war, because honestly that'll just end badly for both of us. I'm going to go ahead here and merge all our armies in Britain in London and give them a general, once we get a general, that is. And I'm going to go ahead and also put together some things here in India. Like, uh, take these up here and this army here from Bombay we're gonna put them on the border with the Sikhs because we're gonna invade the Sikhs eventually so put these in Dhaka because we're gonna attack Assam at some point now these people the this, this Sind or the Sind something like that, we're gonna wanna put up our sphere of influence to in the max here to try and incorporate them who else here is not yet under our glorious control. Uh, I don't want to put them in it. I want to, I want to kill them. <laughs> we need some stuff to kill. So we're going to influence Nepal. Went under and Sikkim. This right here is Bhutan, the lovely Bhutan. And of course, we're not going to influence Assam because <laughs> we're going to kill them. Let's go take a look at our colonial points here. Oh! 
We can't. Life rating needs to be at least 35. But we can create protectorate places into colonies. Protectorates are like British Columbia here, where they're not full-out colonies yet. And after a colony, you can make something a state, which is then fully integrated into your empire. So I'm going to go ahead and quickly go through this, because this takes a long time. Especially when you're something as spread out as the British Empire. So I will be back. So we are now back, and I finished all that nonsense. Here's Ceylon. I don't know why we're there. But we are going to take a look at our decisions. Mm, we can do a whistle-stop tour. Now you see, with the advent of railways in our nation, the idea has been suggested that our monarch tour the nation, traveling from city to city by train. Some urge caution, however, for such public appearances could provide assassins with the opportunity to strike in provinces that are simmering with rebellion. Well, it gives us like four prestige, and I like that. So I'm going to do it. Now here we have the rights of man, which I think is like a basic thing that every great power has. It says, uh, A recognition has begun among our people of the basic fundamental rights that all humanity shares. This is the first step in becoming a truly modern civilization. And we get uh, plus 0 0.20 prestige. So yeah, do that. I'm going to disable the RGO change events. Now, this is why. It says, uh, Tired of your farmers asking you for the 42nd time to intensify farming procedures? You don't want to change your grain provinces into wood? No. I don't care, honestly. And, oh. Wait, what's this? Why is our ruling party Whigs? When we're the house minority. No, 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 no. Ooh, Nationalist Party. Ooh. Reactionaries. Ooh. We want either the Conservatives or the Nationalists in power. When's the next election? September 1st. 1825. Oh, I can't do that. The conservatives are going to outright win if we hold an election. So I'm probably going to do that. Uh, let's get up here. We're going to go ahead and choose our national focuses here. In Southeast England, we're going to encourage clergymen for our educational benefit. And bureaucrats in the Midlands. Now, speaking of education, we're going to need to do some technological research. Now, as we were thrown back to 1821, the mod has graciously uh, taken us back technologically so that we have more to research along the line. We're going to go for introspectionism right now under culture, because this is it's plus 2.50 reinforcement, plus 25 education efficiency, which is incredible. Uh, minus 5 war exhaustion, which is really good because <laughs> we're the British Empire. And a plus 2 to permanent prestige, so there's nothing bad in that. Nothing bad at all. Uh, we're going to merge these fleets. I'm, in fact, going to steal from the channel fleet. If you don't mind, I'm going to steal a commerce raider. Uh, th four frigates. And two, two men of wars. And take them over to that reserve fleet. And we're going to kick off the election. Because I, I cannot abide the Whigs. Honestly, I can't. They they trash the economy. I mean, look at this. Look look at this red. The tariffs, they bar they barely help. We're gonna have to take the spending on our military down. Oh no, I didn't want to do that to construction. That's what I hate about this leg I'm getting. It clicks things that I'm not actually wanting to click. 
So we have put the economy back in the green for right now. Oh my god. It's time to manage the factories. Put everyone on a high um, employment priority. Because you honestly just need workers spilling all over the place. And that's that. Good. We have a project. Oh, railroads. Yeah. We're not going to do all that yet. Need a bit more money. And we're going to go ahead. Put this all the way up to five. Oh my. Friendly government grants access. Our growing influence in a foreign government allows us to station troops in their territory. Excellent. The Trucial States grant us military access. Welcome to COE. Oh, look, this is good. This mod mod. Yeah. Splendid. Absolutely marvelous. Birth rate very high. Our population appears to be increasing rapidly. This is good news. But is it really? Overpopulation. Hmm. Yeah, more people. Yay. Public listed companies. A fledgling stock and bond market has been introduced to the United Kingdom, particularly in London where a frenzy of speculative trading has already begun. British economists are optimistic about the effect this will have on private investment, though some have expressed worry that what goes up may also come down. For now, we enjoy prosperity. But what will tomorrow bring? What a marvelous way to make some money! Yes. Oh, and the Dutch do want an alliance. And you know what? I'm going to accept that. Because the Dutch are historic allies. I'm going to go ahead and continue. In this part, we're going to try and get past this election we're, well, we're having now. Colonial progress. One of our colonies is reporting outstanding success in the development of local commercial ventures and business to the colonial office. According to the local governor, the primary reason seems to be an ambitious land reform undertaken in tandem with British capitalists and industrialists. The colony is reportedly becoming more attractive to immigrants, and the report reflects well on our industrialists as well. Uh. Cover up the report, lest the capitalists get uppity. Pacifist surge. All they're saying is give peace a chance. So pacifist sentiments have been floating about the UK for some time, but in this coming election it seems that whoever can capitalize on the pacifist sentiments in the area will come out a clear winner come election day. The only question still in the air is to which extent pacifist sympathies will hold up through the pre-election debates. Oh. The military needs guns, not idle gossip. So we've just gone a, a pro-military choice there, about 10%. Too stale for war? Military spending. A major report that most of the soldiers' weapons are nearly worn out and want someone to go over them to see if they need to be scrapped. To provide soldiers with new weapons would cost more than the current budget for the military can cope with. We need to upgrade the weapons. And this is about to... there we go. Oh my. Guess London can't hold. Oh, well. Well, uh, I'll shove them in Southampton then. First Corps. An orderly election. The British election is underway and so far has proceeded smoothly. Debates are being carried out in the usual manner, and there are no reports of violence in London or elsewhere. Supporters of the ruling regime have turned out in force, as have the hopefuls seeking to defeat the current government. We shall see. We never know if anything will happen. Who produces what and where? Plans, economies, and freedoms debated. 
Local UK administration has come under criticism for several instances of government subsidies directed at supporting local industry. Opponents argue that the country's economic planners cannot detect consumer preferences, shortages, and surpluses with sufficient accuracy, and therefore cannot efficiently coordinate production. And creeping statism has begun to worry the residents of the UK. Oh. You know. That's rubbish. Rubbish. First Minister is appointed. Our new First Minister is an expert diplomat. I'm sure he'll be perfect for the job. He's actually pretty good, too. Sometimes they give you a really, really rubbish guy. The production quota. State capitalism. Oh, yes. The production quota is too high. We will never be able to reach the demand. The other farmers stand behind him, waiting. Their weathered faces show the same concern and determination as their speaker. Nonsense. No, we need state capitalism. You are right. I want to try and get reactionaries. The political campaign of 1821. The British political parties have begun a nationwide election campaign. So far, the effects have been quite limited, but in the end, one party will gain the upper hand. Advisors state that we could try to influence the outcome ourselves. Support the reactionary parties. Oh, conservatives and cannot. They'd best not cause trouble. I think we're going to increase our relations with the United States. I don't know when I could start colonizing that stuff. Secularization and religion. The British religious policy has become a subject of much debate in the local UK elections. Many argue that the state needs to maintain a watchful policy of secularization, but this threatens to upset long-established religious privileges, and is opposed by many of the local faithful. Uh, the nationalists support moralism. Uh, where is that? It's, it's not in here. So some measure of secularization is essential, I suppose. Um, diamond fever in Mosul Bay. Uh, diamonds. Monopolies and privileges. Merchants from the UK are arguing with the Minister of Finance, who has entertained plans of a nationalization of certain private industries. Yeah, we're, we're going to go for the option that has state capitalism, which isn't there. So, guess this one. Let do and let pass. The world goes on by itself. No monopoly. When we get rid of these wigs, we can start talking about war. Uh, the future of the economy. The election debates in the UK have been going on for a few days now, and the issue that seems to be becoming the determining one for the outcome of the election is, perhaps unsurprisingly, the economy. Several theories are being advanced, but the voters want a clear statement on government policy. How will the government make sure that every British citizen has a chicken in his pot during the coming term in office? Decisive arguments for state capitalism. Uh, what is this? What are the options? Oh, let us avoid a slip into anarchy. Baluchistan? Mm -hmm. Ah, citizenship policy. Uh, we're gonna give them residency. Uh, I do believe that is a reactionary policy. Made in where? Uh, what is this? Oh, the trade. Uh, protectionism. Where is it? There it is. Oh, support the campaign wholeheartedly. We must protect our trade. From the filthy fish. Hey, there it is. The Conservatives declare victory. The British election has ended 
with the leader of the Conservative Party declaring victory from the steps of, well, it says Presidential Palace in London, but it, that's wrong. It's in the steps of 10 Downing Street, London. Okay. Why did we just bring up the French diplomatic screen? <laughs> but we can now fix our budget. Bring the tariffs up a bit. I'm going to tax people. Yes. That, that does so much better. Look at all that. Oh, that's glorious. Yes. Oh. Oh, the, the economy. I do love right wing. That is where we shall end this for now. And we shall return with the discussions of war looming in the future in part two. Tally ho. Right now.